Well, hey everyone, welcome back to Tech and Texas Let's Play Minecraft, and this is episode 5. So, let's get started with today. The first thing I was thinking I should probably work on, uh, I've been doing uh, quite a bit of mining, trying to get materials so that I can show you off a few things, and the one thing I'm running into is that I'm not running across very many diamonds, which I'm going to need for a lot of different items that I'm going to build for some of the different mods. So I thought I'd build a little something that'll help me out with that. So the first thing we'll be doing today is a divining rod. And we'll just bring up our NEI and type that in. All right, and there's three different ones. We're gonna build all three of them in sequence. So it basically takes a stick and covalence dust. I think that's the way that's said. And to make covalence dust, we just need some cobblestone and charcoal. Um, and then the next one up from that, we're going to do the same thing, except uh, we're going to need redstone and iron. And the last one is uh, going to need a diamond and coal. Now, I did find a few diamonds down below, uh, but not as many as I was expecting to, because I, I really wanted to make some mod items. But, you know, um, that'll come a little bit later. So, one of the first things we can make um, is we'll start with the uh, first divining rod. So I'm going to need a stick, and I don't seem to have any on me, so let's see if I have some over here. Awesome, I do. And let's see what we can make here. So, I'm going to need to do some charcoal. I should just need one. And then it says that I need cobble. So we'll just stick that in there. And we got our first covalence dust. So we'll stick one stick in. Do it exactly as the recipe showed. Oops, one extra in there. And then we have our divining rod. Woohoo! All right. Now, what this does basically, I'll just uh, right click here on the ground. And it's just telling me that the value below me is one. Because everything in the Minecraft world has value. Um, everything that, well, I can't click on those, but everything that you see around you has a certain value to it, whether it be tungsten or, you know, diamonds or whatever it might be. Um, and that's basically what it's telling us. Uh, now, with these, uh, it's it'll make it a lot easier to make diamonds once we get it all the way upgraded. So let's go ahead and make the second uh, divining rod. So let's go ahead and find out the recipe again on that. So the second one requires one iron egot and a redstone. All right. So let's see here. We'll do one of these and one of those. And we get our updated. So we'll stick our divining rod in there. And we get the upgraded divining rod. And then finally, we need the last one, which is a diamond and a piece of coal. Should be pretty easy. Awesome. We'll do that last upgrade here. Alright, so that's a top level divining rod. If you right click with it, it suggests that everything around is probably about one, because there's nothing straight in front of it that... You know, see this one, see it found 48 because of the trees that are out front. And I bet you if you right click on these two, yep, these are... Okay, so leaves apparently have no value. Alright. So. I will be going down to in the in the mine in just a minute, and I will show you how this works. Uh, but before we go down there, um, I did find a thumbcraft chest down in the mine, and we really need uh, more storage because I'm running out of space. Like there's no tomorrow, so I will show you how I'm going to take care of that right now. Let's go ahead and make some wooden planks. Then we'll make a chest. Then once we have the chest, we'll stick that in the center of the crafting table. And what I'm doing here, this is uh, a add-on for Minecraft, a mod that's called Iron Chest, I believe. And basically what it does is you take a regular chest and you make an iron chest. But you can also upgrade it from there to a gold chest and then eventually to a diamond and a crystal chest. So I'm just going to stick this down here. And as you'll notice, it has approximately the same space as a double chest, even though it's a single. 
So this is where I'm thinking I'm going to stick Thomcraft stuff from now on. Alright, the other thing I need to work on while I'm up here is uh, I'm going to run low on power very quickly. And, you know, the sun is up here and it will give me free energy. And this generator is just not that efficient. So what I think I'll do first is I'm going to dig under the floor again. So we'll get that dug out. And get that exposed there. And we'll go ahead and dig the rest of this out here. And what I'm going to make to solve the issue of power is I'm going to make a solar panel. Now this is part of industrial craft. And to make a solar panel, I've already showed you how to do electronic chips and a generator. Uh, so basically, this recipe is really simple. Now I am missing a few things, so I'll show you how to make the rest of the stuff to make a solar panel. Now one of the last things I'm going to need is coal. I need at least three pieces to make each recipe. And then we also need glass, which I already have in my inventory. And I'll actually show you a different way of making glass here as soon as that's finished. In the meantime, while we're waiting for that, uh, I'm going to need some tin wiring to run to the solar panel for now. So this works the same way as the copper wiring. We just put three in here, and we actually get nine uh, tin wire. With copper, we only get three. And because it's so low voltage, I think that's why you get a little bit more. All right, let's see how much of this is macerated here. So it looks like we're almost got two there. Just need one more here. The other thing I'm going to need to work on on this episode is making a, a um, overclocker for this. And what an overclocker does is it'll basically make the machine faster, but at the expense of also taking more energy. All right, so we got our three coal dust. So let's go over to our crafting table and let's make that solar panel. All right, so if I remember correctly, the recipe goes like this. You do three coal three glass, and I may be putting these backwards, so two of these chips, and a generator. And there we go. We got our first solar panel. Yay! Alright, let's go over and place this. I prefer placing them up on uh, there, and then the top of it's facing there. And then we'll use our tin wiring and run that straight down. And we'll bring it out from the bat box here. Oops. And straight up the wall. Awesome. We even have two pieces of wire left. Sweet. So from that, I shouldn't hopefully have to be using the generator too much longer. And I'll eventually just take that out of the picture entirely. But as long as the sun's up, it has this glowing, which means that it's producing power, and it'll fill the bat box down there. So, now that we have that done, the other thing is, while I'm thinking about it, we could probably remove this generator for now. Although, we might just want to keep it, but, all right, uh, let me just show you something anyways here. Now, to make a wrench to move machines around an industrial craft, we're going to need um, some copper and some tin. And what that will make, if we put these in the crafting table like so, is it makes bronze dust by combining three of these and one of these. So now I'm going to need six to make a uh, wrench. So we're going to need at least two more of these, and that makes our six bronze dust. Awesome. Let's go ahead and stick that in the furnace here. And then it looks like it's getting close to sunset. So this is going to stop producing energy once that hits. And it should be pretty much when that sun goes down below the horizon, if not just a little bit before. Alright guys, so the uh, brass, the bronze, what am I thinking, um, is done. We have it. Now we can make our wrench. And we do that by simply putting the bronze into the crafting table like so. And we get a wrench out this way. Now I could just run that right over to this and wrench it off, which I'll actually show you. That just comes right off. Now if I try it on these, I sometimes will have a random chance of not getting them back. And later I'll actually show you a way of making that so it doesn't happen. So let's just go ahead and completely unwire that there. 
and we'll put that back in there. Perfect. All right. So I got a permanent power source there. So long as it's not raining and it is sunny, it'll always be powered. And the other thing I want to work on is an overclocker while I'm up here. Now, in order to do that, there's a few things that are needed, and an overclocker will basically be used to make this uh, one of my machines faster, and it can be switched between them. So we'll need an electronic chip, some copper cable, and some coolant cells. Ooh, how do we make coolant cells? Well, we already know how to make the electronic circuit and copper cabling, and I have the circuit and copper cabling already. The only thing we need is coolant cells. Well, how do we make those? Here is how we do it. So we take four pieces of tin, stick it in the crafting table. We get 16 empty cells. That's the first part of the process. Second thing is we need to go find some water. So let's go do that. Should be some nearby here. This should work nicely. And we'll just go ahead and take that from the center there. And just keep on doing that. And as you notice, I'm just right clicking with the cells. And it's decreasing the amount that I have in my inventory there. To the point that I am going to have zero. And, and now if we look in the inside of my inventory, I have 16 water cells. Awesome. All right. So we'll take those back inside. And in order to make these into coolant cells, we take this rubber out of the extractor. We're going to stick three of the water cells in here and wait for that to finish. And I will be right back as soon as that's done. All right. So now we have three coolant cells in inventory. Let's go over here and craft ourselves the first overclocker. So we'll go ahead and stick those on top. One chip and two wires. Yay! And let's see what a difference this makes. I think the first machine I'll stick it in is probably the extractor. Now, let's see what it looks like without it. Another tip to give, uh, let you know, when you convert a water cell to a coolant cell, it becomes not non-stackable. So you're not going to be able to stack multiple coolant cells on each other, so you'll need space to store them. Also, when an extractor is, uh, is processing them, you'll have to take out each coolant cell as it's made. Now, if you notice, that took a while to make that coolant cell. So let's go ahead and uh, put the overclocker in there, and let's see how much faster that makes it. And if you notice, it's already it looks like almost like twice as fast. But it's also taking more power out, too, so. All right, and we'll just let that finish there. All right, now that we got our energy out of the way, and we also have our first overclocker built, I think we should go take a look at that Thomcraft stuff. So let me empty my inventory. Get some mining picks and let's get down there. Also, uh, if I haven't already shown you this, you can use the gems that you find, and there's sapphire, emerald, and ruby. That, uh, from These are from Red Power, and they can be used to make picks uh, for uh, mining. So we'll just grab some sticks, and I'll show you. It basically is exactly the same crafting recipe, except I'm just using these instead. All right, there we go. So we got those, and oh, no, it looks like it's almost sundown. Now let's go down to the mine anyways. Have a little fun. All right, so I will meet you down there. All right, so I'm down in the base of my mine now. And you'll hear, you know, the zombies and that kind of stuff. Found some lava. Ooh, skeleton. All right, let's see if we can take him on. Come on. Oh, there went my sword. All right. So if I remember correctly, the chest should be this direction. Let's go see. Oop, creeper. Two of them. Ooh, this is going to be fun. Hmm. Ouch. Come on. Oh, there's a third creeper. Ooh, doing pretty good. Ow. Oop. 
Well, that's going to cause lava to go down that direction. Let me go ahead and grab some of that cobble. All right. Do we have any more creepers in the area? All right, really quick. So this is all the Thumbcraft stuff. We got um, some artifacts different of different types. It looks like I got some company. Whew, that was close. Oh, and he gave me all the stuff that was in the chest anyways. Well, it looks like I got one heart, so I better hurry and get back up top. And I will meet you back up there. Alright, so we're back up where it's safe. Let's go ahead and dump this stuff in here. Looks like we got a couple saddles. Got some common artifacts. And forbidden. Awesome. We also got a fourth boot disk. This is actually for Red Power Computers. I will show you how that works at a later time. And it looks like we've got a little bit of extra redstone. Ooh, some string. That's going to be awesome. And even got a chest out of it. All right. So I was going to go mining after I finished that and show you how the divining rod works. But I'm going to need to eat something first. Otherwise, I am going to die down there. And I'll just keep this with me. Also, while we're at it, let's check in on the farm here. So if you notice, this still has some a grain that has yet to fully grow. And this was the stuff that wasn't next to water. Now the ones that are next to water have all grown up. So let's go ahead and harvest those now and get the wheat out of them so I can get some food. Well, it didn't get too many seeds out of that. Maybe I'm just missing one of them. Alright, so got that one harvested. Let's go ahead and get the rest of this. So it's definitely better to place it next to water. Seems to grow much, much faster. Alright, looks like we have a few extra seeds from the other one, so we'll go ahead and fill that in. And I will get some water over to these in just a little bit. So, let's make some bread. Bread is really simple. We'll just go over to our crafting table here, take these, and make them into loaves. Awesome. I'll carry those down with me in the mine. The rest of the stuff I will drop off into here. Now that we got all that out of the way, and it looks like I'm back at full health, I will probably need to, uh, within the next episode or so, make myself some armor, and I will show you how to do that as well. And I will meet you actually down in the mine here, so, we will cut to that. Alright, well, I'm back down in the mine. Let's uh, get some torches up here so you can actually see where I'm going. And we'll just keep on placing these. This is a tunnel that I have dug all the way down through here. And this actually goes for quite a distance. Oh, see, now, this is one of the bad things about mining in the dark. You do not see some of the ores that you're missing. Alright, let's try out that divining rod. So, we'll right-click here. Eh, not so good. Ooh, 128. Hmm, so there's probably some really good stuff behind there. Let's see if I can find anything that's better than 128 on this wall. So far, just 128. Alright, let's check down this way. Ooh, 320. Let's see what's down this way. Ah, redstone. That's probably one of the things that's causing it to go off. Yay. Now let's see if there's anything behind that that would be causing it. Nope. That's what it was. Alright. Whoa. Creeper again. He almost got me too if I hadn't noticed him. <laughs> Alright, let's place the torch back in here so that that doesn't happen again. Ooh, and we got a zombie. And I neglected to bring a sword down with me. How silly of me. Alright. Let's keep on putting torches down this direction. And we'll get all the way down in here. I actually want to show you what I found down here. This is awesome. This will work out great as another power source in industrial craft. As soon as I have enough diamonds to make um, an item from um, additional build craft items. So look at this huge lava lake in here. This will take a while to actually pump out too. But let's see what else we can find. Let me see if we have any... Diamonds down here, they're really high value, so they should show up pretty quickly if they're within a short range. So, so far I'm only seeing a 
Let's see, where was that? Had some really good value. There we go. Should be paying more close attention. <laughs> sure takes a lot longer when you don't have a sword with you. Which I need to remember next time to bring down with me. Alright, let's locate that again. There we go. Alright. So let's do this. Let's find out what's causing that to say that there's 256 here. The higher that number is, the more likely that there is that there's something in this general area, like diamonds or whatever it might be. Let's see if that's still showing. Nope. Hmm. Ooh, whoa. That's way off the charts. So that's probably not diamond. Um, it's probably a red power item because those go off the charts. So let's see what we can find here. We'll just dig this whole area out. Because it says it's coming from this direction, which I'm hoping means that it's either diamond or something similar. Oh, it is diamonds. Awesome. Let me get some light in here so you can actually see that. And it sounds like I got some different mobs dying up above. And I added a little thing um, in to my texture pack that makes these glitter, which I, I like. I mean, it just adds a little bit more fun to the texture pack, basically. So, looks like we got three diamonds. Wow, that was awesome. Alright, now the value's probably gone down in this area. And let's just get the rest of these ores while I'm down here. Let's see what else is, might have been in this area. Nope, that was it. Wow. That was a really good find. Alright, everything else is suggested value one. Alright, well, I got what I came for, which was diamonds. Um, I should hopefully have enough now, actually, to make uh, what they call teleport pipes, uh, which is a add-on for build craft. And that will allow me to teleport... What I'm going to do for it is teleport liquid. And I'll also show you a few other things. Uh, as well that we'll be doing. But for now, uh, that's all the mining that I'm going to do on camera. I will meet you back up top. Alright, well I'm back up top and now uh, I've gotten all the stuff into my ores chest. From there, uh, one of the things that I keep on running into every time I go down mining is that I need more space in my inventory. So, rather than doing that, I will get a backpack. But, unfortunately, I don't have all the resources for it at the moment. So let's take care of that right now. First of all, let me show you how we make one. We'll need some wool, some string, and some iron. Now the only thing I don't have right now is the wool. And I'm gonna have to go find some. But first, let me get some shears. Because that will make it much easier. Oops. <laughs> I promise I'm not a noob. I hope. All right. Now let's see, I did have some sheep running around, and I eventually need to go bring one of them in and, and corral them so that I actually have a steady supply of wool. But for now, one of these should be fine. Ooh, two is even better. Yes, you are shorn. Baha, baha. Alright, let's go back and get that backpack made. And what the backpack will basically allow me to do is it will collect uh, different stuff as I mine and allow me 15 more inventory slots. So here we go. Two iron there. The chest in the center. Oh, I forgot to pick up string. That will do no good if we don't have string. Let's see, I know I stuck it in one of these chests. Oh, another thing that's really nice about NEI, I will show you right here, is if you type in a particular item, not only does it show you over here what it is, it also shows you what it's from a lot of times, but it blacks out your inventory so that when you're looking for stuff, you can just look around, and whatever is highlighted, which I'm assuming is in mob drops, we have string there. All right. Now, I'm sure that I had just a little more string than that. If not, that's okay, too. Oh, 
does look like that's all the string I have, is three. Because I'm not out too much at night trying to look for trouble. I don't want to die halfway into doing this. So there's another way of getting string. It will take a little while, but uh, let's go ahead and grab some flaxseed here. And what flaxseed is, is it's part of red power, and what it allows you to do basically, when you grow flax, it'll actually give you string from that. So let's go ahead and knock out a few pieces of wheat that have not grown that much, let's say for example the one here. And I only should need one flax, I think. Maybe two just to be safe. Alright. And let's um, cut here, and I'll wait for it to grow. Come back and show you exactly what it what it does when it's grown. Actually, because I just realized the rest of my string was in my upgraded iron chest. So now we can actually make that backpack. Alright. So we need string in the corner, one chest in the center, two iron to the side, and two wool. And that gets us a miner's backpack. Awesome. And there are the additional slots. All right, let's see if those flaxseed grew very much from when I was looking at them just a moment ago. All right, not so much. They actually grow a lot slower than wheat, so you, you'll have to be very patient with them. Um, and that's one thing I've discovered about those. Wheat usually will grow pretty decently fast and um, can be a steady supply of food if you keep track of it. And also, once we get more into forestry, I'll be showing you how you can keep a farm going very quickly and easily that way. All right, well, now is as good as time of any is to wrap up. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching and rating and subscribing. Thank you, thank you, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to help me improve or have ideas for future videos, leave it in the comments below or send it to techandtuxproductions at gmail.com.